The most common question that I have been asked all throughout my life was this. Why are you so obsessed with Thomas the Tank Engine? This is a question that I really have wanted to answer properly for years now. And this is a video that I've wanted to make for years now. And it's about time that I did. I'm Duck, AKA Troublesome Junction, and I'm here to tell you about why I am a Thomas the Tank Engine fan. It all kind of began back when I was in kindergarten slash preschool, you know? I was crazy about Thomas and Friends. Most kids, they had watched it, but no one had really cared about it to the degree that I did. And it was very prominent in my life. It got me through a lot of really hard times, and it was just something that I could always come back to whenever I felt down or needed a little pick-me-up. But then when first grade rolled around, it kind of shifted into the back of my head. At the time, I was more focused on things like Legos, Beyblades, Bakugan, Trash Pack, you know, the things that most kids were into during that time. But then fifth grade came along. When I was browsing YouTube that night, I was recommended a video. Duncan gets spooked. This was a Thomas episode that had been uploaded to YouTube at the time. And for some reason, that episode, after I went in and watched it, I went into it thinking, oh, well, why not? You know, I love Thomas and Friends as a kid. So, of course, you know, feeling a nostalgia, I guess. As most people in Thomas community know, Duncan Gets Spooked is a far more darker episode in the series. And after I was done watching it, it left me with a feeling of awe and wonder. I was genuinely thinking about this when I was going about my everyday life. It was weird. So then what did I do? I started looking back into it. I started hopping back onto the Thomas and Friends bandwagon slowly but surely. You know, that's where I found out about YouTubers like Leo Kim Video. Leo would take merchandise from yesteryear and compare it to the garbage that were served up now and just talk about how good merchandise really was back when I was young, back in the 80s, back in the 90s, when other kids were also experiencing the same type of merchandise. But then sixth grade year came along and that was when I had fully been into Thomas and Friends. Like it was full steam ahead at that point. You know, I got my old toys back out, I put them back on the shelf, I was crazy about watching Leo Kim videos videos at the time, you know, it was one of those things when you just get back into it and you just feel that feeling of happiness when you do. I was very quiet about it though. I didn't tell a soul that this is what I enjoyed doing. Most people just knew that I liked Legos, most people knew that I liked, you know, magnets and crazy things like that but I never once brought up the fact that I liked Thomas and Friends. I was afraid to. Then the next year, which was my seventh grade school year came along, you know, new building, new people, new everything. So this was the year when I thought, well, why not? Where most kids would say that they were into sports, they were into hanging out with friends and all that other kind of stuff on the first day of school. I went up there and I said, I'm into model trains and I'm into collecting things and people rightly so asked well what are you into collecting and i just said thomas the tank engine the amount of heads that i had turned that day and eyebrows that were raised was unbelievable quite frankly and at that moment it was very clear to tell that this wasn't going to end well and for the next several years let's just say it was a very bumpy road as I pointed out in many other videos, I was very heavily ridiculed and questioned for why Thomas and Friends over those years, you know? I could definitely understand why people were very confused about it, but many people just kind of went onto their own speculation train. Rather than just directly ask me about it, they just kind of went on their own speculations. Many people were saying that I was crazy. Many people said that I was a psychopath. Many people said that I had autism or something like that. It was, it was a lot. And I can definitely say it really did hurt. But I didn't want to let those people and the things that they said and did stop me. I was happy and I was having fun. And that's my biggest motto in life. Why do it if you can't have fun in the process? So I kept on doing it. I was still just as open about it as I was on that day. 
It even led to the creation of my Instagram page, my YouTube channel through that. And my main message that I try and push on both my Instagram and my YouTube channel, yeah, you can be weird and you can be different, but it's most important to be you. And don't try and follow the social norms that everyone else expects you to follow. You know, I come on Instagram and, you know, half of the people who are criticizing me for this type of thing, we're all taking the exact same copy and paste type of pictures with the exact same poses. I just don't like that kind of thing. I strive to be different and express myself. And that's where this page and stuff came in. Most people would like to point out the fact that I never really post much about my family, um, what's really going on in my life, and things like that because this page isn't about that. My page isn't about me, it's about me and what I enjoy doing. It's more about my collection and the videos I make with them than it is about me as a person. That's the kind of thing that I wanted to push. And as most people remember, I used to wear a mask and that was kind of to further emphasize, this doesn't matter. What I look like, my story really wasn't important to what I did. My collection was the main focus and I wanted to keep it that way. But slowly but surely, as you could, you know, clearly tell from this video and many of my other posts, I did start to add elements of myself. And I really don't like making personal type of videos, but this is a video that I really think that I need to make just because it's something that I get asked constantly but I never could give them the straight copy and paste answer. Now that I've gone over kind of what led me into getting back into Thomas, let's talk about why Thomas and Friends is still meaningful to me today. Now, what if I were to tell you that I hate Thomas and Friends? I hate it. I hate what it is today. Because Thomas and Friends, when it was created in the 1940s by the Reverend W. Audrey in the form of the Railway Series set of books, he wrote them with the mentality in mind, you're not just writing for children, you're writing for everyone. You're writing for the children, yes, but you're also writing it for the parents, the grandparents, the moms, the dads, the aunts, the uncles that have to read these stories. If you were to take the slow paced nature of Thomas and Friends, you know, anyone could take something from it. You can't say that about having parents watch Baby Shark, Cocomelon, or Paw Patrol over and over again. Those are baby shows, and what Thomas and Friends has been made into by Mattel is a baby show. Thomas and Friends was not meant to be just a baby show that appealed to only little kids. Even with the TV series, it was something that anyone could watch and take something from it. The thing that I and many others took from it was if you watched those earlier seasons, I'd highly recommend seasons one through seven, you can watch those series and see all of the time, passion, and work that went into making those models, those set pieces, and the beautiful storytelling of those. It's something that you can watch and just appreciate the slower, laid back tone of the show. That's what I had hooked on to. Thomas and Friends took a concept of, in a sense, the things that are no different than the things on my shelf and the things on my model railway over there. It took those things and made them feel alive. It made them feel like living, breathing steam locomotives. And all of that through many years of set work, story writing, and all of that was just flushed down the toilet by Mattel. They made it into what Thomas and Friends argued it wasn't. What the original creator didn't want it to be. Thomas and Friends was that show that I look back on. Most people will look back on shows like Spongebob, old Disney movies, old Nick classic 90s Nickelodeon, things like in that vein, and will definitely sit, point out a lot of the things that I pointed out. A lot of the things that, you know, you don't find in cartoons nowadays. A very laid back environment, slice of life situations. Something that anyone can sit down and enjoy. It's not meant to be some bubbly, flashy, in your face type of thing. Compare the case with Teen Titans and Teen Titans Go. It went from being a series that was loved by both kids and adults 
to a series that now just caters to children with poop and funny fart jokes. That is what they did to Thomas and Friends. I will never associate with that newer Thomas and Friends thing. I'll always associate with those memories that I have with the more laid back and effort filled environments that were created. All those beautiful stories that were told through little models like this running along the track. Thomas and Friends was that thing that I could go back to no matter what. When life got tough for me, I always turned to Thomas and Friends. It always felt like it would be okay. Thomas and Friends is a timeless show that I and many others love to go back on. But many people just don't understand the fact that we're not all just sitting here watching a baby show. We're appreciating a legacy. One that was made by the Wilbur W. Audrey. One that was made by his son Christopher Audrey. One that was made by Britt Allcraft. One that was made by David Mitten. One that was made by early hit entertainment even if you want to go that far. It's sad to see what Thomas and Friends has become. And it's also sad that many people who are in the same position that I am were terrified to tell people that they're afraid of Thomas without being ridiculed. So now you have your answer. I love Thomas and Friends for what it meant to me, for what it's made it stood out, for the beautiful messages that it told through those models. I'm Troublesome Junction, and I'm signing out. I'll see you guys on the flip side.